Hey, Saints, how you guys doing? What's happening? What's up, guys? Pastor Willie? How you doing? I was going to say what's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's so good to be back. Uh, we have a segment right now that we want to do for you guys, an episode, I should say. Uh, and the title is Let's Just Please God. What do you on, think about that, Pastor man, Willie? That's, that's, that's a serious thing, man. If, if people could get in their hearts and their minds and, yep. and they just want to please God and you know, put away all the other stuff. It's not about anything else but pleasing God. Man. Man. Pleasing him. So we'll <laughs> be like right that. back. We'll talk to you guys soon. back we're back let's get into this let's just please God so saints we always have to remember that in everything that Jesus did he always pleased God Jesus focus was always on the father right pastor Willie it was he, always. he just wanted to please the father mm -hmm. if if it wasn't if it was something else Jesus his focus wasn't there his focus was simply on pleasing the father we see this in John chapter 8 verse 29 and I'm going to read that for you guys right now and the one who sent me, Jesus said, is with me. Mm -hmm. He said, he has not deserted me for I always do. Jesus said, what pleases him? Jesus said, I always do what pleases the father. Nothing I do in my life, me being on this planet, walking on this earth. He says, I'm mission focused and my mission is always to please God. So the question is, saints, we want to be like him. So how do we Please, God. Man. So let's start out like this. You know, we got a few things that we want to hit you guys up with today. And we'll start out like this. Having faith pleases God. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, you know, might, you might say, man, man, that's that's very simple. Right. But having faith really pleases God. It does. And I want to say this before I get into the scripture. <laughs> I want you to reference as we're preparing to get into the scripture is Hebrews 11 and 6. But I want you to think about every time you get ready to sit down in a chair. Mm. You have the faith to believe that that chair is going to hold you. And I believe that God wants us to get to a place where we say, you know what? I have the faith that whatever my life is doing is pleasing God. Mm -hmm. So it says right here in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. So you have to have faith when you go to sleep at night that rather if you wake up in the morning to go to your job or whatever it is that you do, or because you're a believer, when you open up your eyes, if you're not on this side, mm -hmm. you have faith to believe that you will be with the Lord. It says, again, mm -hmm. it's without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently mm -hmm. seek him. Mm -hmm. So you got to get to a place where you say, you know what? I'm going to do everything that I can, Pastor Trey, mm -hmm. to please God. So a prime example, man, you know, I know we're going to tag team on this thing, but Enoch, bro. Enoch, yes. The Bible talks about Enoch. The Bible talks, you, you read Hebrews 11 and 6, but Hebrews 11 and 5 speaks about Enoch. So Hebrews 11 is a good chapter to go read on faith if you don't know. So Hebrews 11 and 5 talks about Enoch and how Enoch had faith. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life, meaning that Enoch was raptured. Mm -hmm. He was just taken. So he was raptured so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken Enoch away. For before Enoch was taken, he was commended as one who what? As Please. one who pleased yes, God. God. Look, if you want to be raptured, when I read this, it says to me, if you want to be raptured, if you want to be with, with Christ one day, as he when he comes back to take his church, man, you have to do things to please God. You can't just profess to be a Christian, but is your life pleasing to God? Mm -hmm. See, when we believe God and believe what he says, that faith always pleases God. So faith pleases God. Yes. Let's go to number two, Pastor Willie. Yes. Being spiritually minded, saints pleases God. Mm -hmm. 
Being spiritually minded pleases God. In Romans chapter eight, if you have your Bibles, turn there in verses five through eight. It says this. It says for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. We want to be spiritually minded. We don't want to be fleshly minded. But those who are living according to the spirit, it says, set their minds on the things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, the mind of the flesh is death, mm -hmm. but the mind of the spirit is life. And the mind of the flesh is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh, what they cannot please God. Mm -hmm. So we are in the flesh and we are carnally minded and we are doing things that are contrary or ungodly or unrighteous or contrary to the word of God. We cannot please God. But in verse nine, it says this. However, however. Mm -hmm. So he didn't leave us there. No, 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 no. Okay. However. You are not living in the flesh, meaning controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If in fact the spirit of God lives in you, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to, the, to him. So saints, we have the spirit of Christ. So that means that we should be able to be spiritually minded, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. We should want that. And look, we have to look at this scripture and see that there's two things being comp compared here, compare and contrast it like two different mindsets. And that those two different mindsets is the normal or human mindset or the mind led by the spirit. Mm -hmm. So if there, if you're the human mindset or the, the natural mindset, that's the flesh or the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. But he's saying here that we have to have the spiritual mindset or the spirit of God leading us. Mm -hmm. We must be led by the spirit of God if we desire to please God. So the question is, do, <laughs> do you, you want, want to please, please God? God? Right. <laughs> so that brings me to our next point. Mm -hmm. Fearing God. <laughs> you said fearing God pleases God. Yes. So there has to become a reverence. Not that, oh, I'm scared like the boogeyman. No, he don't want us but to be afraid. He wants us to reverence him. To reverence him. So That's I know we both have children and our children... In uh, some form of fashion, they, they fear us, <laughs> Good example. but it is the yeah. reverence of God. Not, our kids are not afraid of right. us. Like, oh, my God, Dad, right? Right. But they love us, so therefore, I believe that they fear us. So here, here we go. In Psalm 147, 11, it says, it said, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Mm -hmm. So our children don't need to even understand how much we love them right. when they show the fear and reverence. It's not, reverence, that, yeah. not the, the being afraid, oh God, daddy's going to beat me down. Right. No, 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 not, no, not none of that. But the reverence and then they acknowledge him mm -hmm. as king. Yep. So it says in him, those who hope in his mercy. Mm -hmm. So even when our children mess up, mm -hmm. even when we mess up on our jobs, when we're going to different things, we need to get to a place where we say, you know what? God, show mercy on them. Yeah. Show mercy on me. So then when we properly fear and respect God, we'll be motivated to avoid sin. Ooh, oh, you got to say it again. You the mic. Well, you said, well, go ahead. Dude, you, you, you said something. You got you to say that so clear, bro. When we properly fear or reverence and respect God, we will, we will be motivated, motivated to, to avoid sin, sin or not sin. Mm -hmm. See, when we have that awe of God, mm -hmm. man, that pleases God. And I feel like sometimes that awe for God is gone. Yes. Like we don't we don't recognize God as God. Right. Right. It's, it's cool. All the songs that say, oh, I am a friend of God. Right. We've gotten so used to being a friend of God that we've lost that all for God. That and we reverence. have to understand yeah, that we keep that reverence. Right. Yeah. Because that's what pleases God. So let's go to point number four. If we talk about pleasing God. So mm -hmm. another thing that will pleases God is obedience. Mm -hmm. Obeying God, Pastor Willie, yeah. pleases God. And we all know the story about uh, Saul and how Saul didn't obey God. Mm -hmm. And so when Samuel the prophet came to Saul, Samuel reminded God, reminded Saul that obedience is better than sacrifice. You can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 through 23. I'm going to um, paraphrase here but because uh, we don't have too much time. But it simply says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. So you can go and you can be at church every Sunday. You can do all these different things, but you don't do what God God's word says do, right. and God's not pleased. Right. 
right. because it's not obedience. You, you're, you're sacrificing by just going to going to church or what we call churching or doing these different things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But God wants a pure sacrifice from us. He wants us to be obedient to him. Right. Right. And but so I love that right here where you're going to follow it up. Yeah. Yeah. Verse so 23, we, we, we have to be obedient. Verse number 23 says rebellion is as sinful. Listen to this now, saints. Rebellion is as as sinful as witchcraft mm -hmm. and stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. So if you have a stubborn heart and you don't want to be obedient to God, if you're rebellious against God, you know what God is telling you to do. You know what God is all about and what he requires of us. And in your heart, you're just like, man, I, I don't care about that. You know what God thinks about divorce. You know what his word says about all, adultery, fornication, mm -hmm. all these different things. And you almost in your heart don't care. Right. You, you already know that you're not going to be obedient to that. Then it's saying it's just like witchcraft or worshiping idols. God's commands... God commands us to be obedient to him because it is beneficial, not just to God, saints, but it's also beneficial to us. Right. He's just like any loving father, like you brought up us That's being right. fathers, right? It's like God just wants the best for us. None of us want to see our children harmed. And when we disobey God, death comes from that. That's right. He just wants the best for us. He just wants the best for us. So let's go to number five. Uh, number five is... Giving the sacrifice God wants pleases God. Right. And really, really simply, we can find this in Hebrews again, 13, 15 through 16. And also there's a good example with Cain and Abel. Right. Cain could have brought the, the best sacrifice. He could have brought his very best to God and he chose not to do so. Right. His heart right. wasn't right. His heart wasn't right. And he got upset mm -hmm. behind it. And then he murdered his brother. But let me read this scripture real quickly before we close. Hebrews 13. 15 through 16, it says, through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Do not neglect to do good, to contribute for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So look at this. Let me read that again. Do not neglect to do good, to contribute to the needy of the church as an expression of fellowship for such sacrifices are always pleasing to God. There's two key points here that we're going to hit before we before we turn this camera off today because we got to get it. There's two key points in these verses that we have to talk about when it, it when it talks about sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's so clear. Number one is trust trusting God. God. Mm -hmm. Trusting God. And number two is loving others or loving our neighbor. These two these two points are brought out in this particular passage of scripture. And if you think about it, it goes right back to the two greatest commandments. It's to love, love the Lord, Lord your God, God with, with all, all your heart. heart. All Come your on. Mind, all your soul and all your spirit. And, and then to love spirit. your neighbor as yourself. That's right. Right? And so if we want to make the best sacrifice we can to God, it's to have that sacrifice where we reverence him and we put him first and then we sacrifice ourselves for somebody else. So saints, hopefully you got something out of this message on today. I know it was pretty quick. I think this was the truth in 10 or 11, <laughs> not seven, but dot, man, dot, dot, dot. yeah, yeah. It was some good stuff in here. And so we just want to ensure that just we're pleasing to God. God. We just want to please God. How many saints today really want to please God? Look, before you make any decision, before you do anything, before you decide to hold that grudge, Ask yourself, is what I'm doing pleasing God? Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Pastor Willis? It is that simple. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to bring it to you today, nice and easy, uh, but straight at it. <laughs> Bros for real, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, we just want to please God. Until next time, we'll yeah. holler at you guys. Love, love. Boom. Boom.